Hi guys, thanks for stopping back to Pete's Garage. Now when I get along in building an engine, and when I'm this far, there's a couple things I worry about. And the biggest thing I worry about is accidentally dropping something in the intake, down one of the runners into the head, or down one of the oil return holes. Now, it does happen, and I know you can say you can be careful, and you can be as careful as you want, but the fact remains that if you accidentally drop something in one of these holes here, and it goes into the head, or it goes down the oil return, you're going to have to rip this all apart. If you can't reach it with a magnet, if you can't get a magnet in there and pull it out, you're going to have to tear this all apart. You're going to have to take off the intake manifold, tear it all apart, redo the whole thing all over again. It's not worth it. So what I like to do at this point is put on the carburetors, and in my case, throttle bodies, and the valve covers. That's why throttle bodies and valve covers. They seem pretty simple. There's a couple things you keep in mind when you put your carburetor on or a throttle body and different kind of gaskets for your valve covers. So let's get started. We'll put the, uh, let's put the throttle bodies on first. Now when you're talking about putting a carburetor or a throttle body on your manifold, the most important things are surface preparation and cleanliness. Your surface of your manifold should be clean. There shouldn't be any, if, you're, if you took your uh, carburetor off or the throttle body off of a previous installation or you're rebuilding it, you should make sure it's clean. There shouldn't be any of the, any, any uh, gasket sealer, silicone or whatever around left, left over from the last time you took it off. It should be nice and clean and it should be flat. If you're not sure it's flat or you think there's a little lip there or a burr, you can take some, uh, take a, a, a flat edge, like a, a, a real thick paint stick with maybe some thousand grit sandpaper on there and lightly go over to make sure that the opening around the entire carburetor or the throttle body opening is flat. So then it's clean. You also want to put some paper or stuff some rags down in here so if you do file it, nothing falls inside and then vacuum it before you pull it out. So you got your surface clean. It's nice and clean. The, the surface of the, the manifold is clean and the surface on the bottom side of your carburetor or your throttle body is nice and clean. Those are the most important things. So then you'll choose your gasket. Most people use these paper gaskets and that's the most common kind. I use the paper gaskets. Um, I've, I, I'm really not partial to the cork type gaskets. There are also gaskets that are coated so you might have a blue coated gasket. But uh, regardless of which one you choose, all you're doing here is you're trying to seal this opening from vacuum leaks. So you're trying to seal from air, trying to get between your carburetor or throttle body. I'll put this on here. All you're trying to do is trying to seal vacuum right here because as air goes through the carburetor you're creating a vacuum and you, you don't, an air is going to try and get in here. So you're just trying to seal vacuum leaks and it's not a ton so you're not really gluing these things together. When I talked about putting the intake manifold on, you're not going to be gluing these things together. You're simply trying to seal it from air being sucked in underneath. So, uh, in, in a perfect situation, and, in, and, and if you're just changing your carburetor, uh, you can use a little sealant on the top and the bottom just to make sure you seal around here. You don't need a ton, just to make sure it seals. Um, but if you're, if you're putting a carburetor on a newly built engine with a new cam and everything, you, you, you can use a paper gasket. You don't want to put anything on there because you might have to take the carburetor off to change the jets. When you're putting on a dyno, you might have to jet up, jet down, you might have to take carburetor off. And I've had to take carburetors and put them on and off up to seven, eight, maybe even ten times to tune an engine. So it's not a good idea to put anything on here. So when you take it off, every time you've got to keep cleaning the surface and getting, using a new gasket. So after you have your engine tuned and everything's ready to roll, you can leave it there and, and not worry about it. If you don't have vacuum leaks, leave it clean. You don't need any sealant on there. Or uh, if you take it off for the last time or you're just replacing it, you put a little bit of beat, little beat around there on both sides, put a little beat around here, and that would take care of any vacuum leaks. You won't have to worry about it. But before I do any of that, what I like to do is, and this is just a matter of me being uh, a neat freak and I like to have things look neat, I, like, I put my gasket on like this. And then I'll take my carburetor or throttle body. Here's my throttle body. And I'm going to set it on here and I'm going to line the holes so it's all set up just like that. Make sure it's nice and aligned. Look down the holes. And I, I don't like these, this excess gas that's gasket sticking out, so all I do is I just come along and I mark, mark the gasket where it's going to be extra on the front and back. I do both sides. And when I take that off, I will simply just take some scissors, razor blade actually, and trim, trim that off just so it's not hanging out. I don't like to look at the extra gasket material. Now I'll address one thing right now. Uh, 
powder coating. You can see that when I powder coated my manifold, I powder coated the top of the manifold itself. The reason I did that is because this area between the two throttle bodies will be seen and I didn't want this to be a different color on top than it was on the side. There's also powder coating all the way around here. If this were a carburetor, I would not do that because you have gasoline and air and gasoline would eventually get in here and eat through and, and ruin through the, the powder coating. But since it's not there, I really don't need it. So I'm not worried about it here. So it's nice and flat. It's nice and clean. It's an excellent surface. It's all sealed all the way around. I have my gasket marked. So I'm going to cut my gasket. We'll come back and we'll put the uh, put my throttle body on. Okay, my gasket's all cleaned up. Have it nice and neat all the way around. I've checked my alignment with a couple bolts to make sure that it's on straight and none of the gasket shows out from underneath. So I'm going to gently lift this off and put the throttle body aside. And I have my gasket here. Now, what I can do is, there's a, uh, there's a product, there's a product that I use, and let me, let me go up a little, give me a little better picture here, hold this down. Uh, as I said, in a perfect situation with a gasket, paper gasket, and you put this on straight, you shouldn't need any sealant at all. You should, really shouldn't. If it's flat, if the carburetor is flat, you bolt it down, it should stay, and it should not leak with a paper gasket. However, I like the little insurance to make sure that it doesn't leak and it just helps a little bit to make sure that there aren't any vacuum leaks. I use something called High Tech. It's a Permatex product. You can buy this, uh, this product at any store and it's red. It's very thin and it comes with a brush on there but that brush is very, very coarse and very wide and huge. So I simply use, I have another artist brush. I take a little brush with this and I use it very carefully, sparingly, and all I do is just gently go around with the high tech. I'll go around this whole opening just like this. And again, I'm just trying to create a seal for the vacuum. I'm not trying to glue these parts together. I'm just trying to create a seal. And I'm just going to do this as neatly as possible with a little brush, just like that, all the way around the opening to seal that down. And the nice thing about this high-tech stuff is that once you get it on here, it's extremely sticky, hence the name high-tech, but it holds your gasket in place. So when you're putting your carburetor or throttle body on, you don't have to worry about the gasket moving around and squishing out, moving around. So it's only going to, and it kind of stretches and it leaves strings, so you've got to be careful not to make a mess with it. But it, it, uh, it will hold the gasket in place because it's nice and sticky. Sit it off to the side. Now I can take my gasket and put my gasket and make sure the holes are lined up just like that and just sort of just push this down just like that just push it around and it's going to hold that gasket in place while I put the throttle body on nice and neat just like that okay very good now now I want to create a seal between the gasket and the throttle body so I'll put another light coat around here and I'll set the throttle body on and I'll start to uh, bolt it down and torque it up. Now I have the throttle body mounted. I have it just, just uh, run down a little bit just to hold it in place all the way around and use a nice criss use a crisscross pattern just to get it seated flat. And I'm going to open it to make sure that all of the butterflies open nice and smooth, nothing interferes inside. I look and look down the side and I can see that the gasket is not interfering with anything. As a matter of fact, the gasket is perfectly on the outside. I don't have to worry about the gasket interfering at all. It looks nice down in there. So I'm going to torque this down. And I, I use my quarter inch because you don't want to over torque this for a simple reason, especially with a carburetor. You can warp or you can bend your carburetor. And if you warp the base of your carburetor, you're going to be really sorry because you'll never be able to get the vacuum leaks all out and you'll end up getting a new carburetor because of it. So I use a quarter inch. I go down just you know, wrist tight. It doesn't have to be super tight. If you have a torque spec, follow a torque spec. If you want me to give you a number, I'll say no more than maybe 10 inch pounds. I'm going around it very lightly. Now that's secured. And I'm confident by using the high tech, looking down in there, that it's going to be sealed against vacuum leaks. Uh, there's a way to check that. We'll go over that later on. So now I have the front one on. Now I can put the back throttle body on, complete that, and then we'll move to the valve covers. So now I've got both of my throttle bodies mounted to the manifold. I can look down inside and see that I have the sealant inside. None of it's dripping in there to cause a problem. 
I've got my linkage on here, and this is a stainless steel linkage I put on here, uh, made with spherical rod ends, polished it to make it look nice. The linkage works nice and smooth. Both of the, all the butterflies, they open up nice and wide. They open up fully. When they come back, they seat. Absolutely no binding whatsoever, and it's nice and clean. Uh, the gaskets are trimmed, so it looks like a very neat installation. That's the way I like it. And one of the biggest questions that I've had uh, people stopping by and asking me, they ask why only the rear throttle body has the motor on it for the idle control and the throttle position sensor. Well, it's pretty simple. This front throttle body is filled up, I have it filled up with a, a um, polyester resin to seal the front throttle body from letting any air in. And I made this back plate here that completely seals all the orifices in the back of the throttle body where the uh, throttle uh, position or the idle throttle mixture motor would sit. So that's no longer there. I only need one on the back since it's a dual plane, dual quad manifold. This will feed the entire engine. I only need one throttle motor to give a little bit of air through here to make it idle. And I only need one throttle position sensor since both of the throttle positions or both of the throttle linkages are connected together. So we always know where the throttle linkage is in relation to each other and wide open throttle to fully closed. That's set through the computer when I get it on the, on the um, dyno and when I get it all hooked up before I start running and I'll threat those, set those positions. So now I have the throttle bodies on or in your case if you have carburetors put on there you don't have them torqued out so much that you're worried about uh, warping the plate, bottom plate of your carburetor and it can happen so please be careful. Uh, you don't want that to happen, that will cause a leak for sure. And if you're using cork gaskets, if you do have a cork gasket, after you uh, bolt it down, you might not have any of the cork popping out underneath the carburetor. And that might be good now, but we're, I'm going to talk about cork gaskets next, putting on a valve cover, and I'll, I'll show you what to look for, I'll tell you what to look for when you use a cork gasket. So let's get to the, uh, let's get to the valve covers. So now it's time to put our valve covers on and as with the carburetor or throttle bodies you have a couple choices of gaskets the most common being the cork type gasket this is an intake manifold gasket but I'm just using it to show the cork type gasket now cork is cork is a good material it's an all-around material if you're just building a regular engine you can use a cork gasket a couple things to remember with cork though uh, cork will absorb moisture so when you put your cork gasket on and it's seated. When you put your valve cover on, you might have it tight. As it gets, as it starts to absorb oil, it's going to expand, and that's when it might squish out on you. So cork gaskets tend to uh, squish out if they're over tightened, or they will. There's no doubt about that. They will squish out, and then over time, the oil will impregnate all the pores of the cork, and the it will dry out and it will leak. So cork gaskets over time they will leak. The other option is that these are the gaskets that I use. This is a, a much more expensive gasket, but as you can see, this gasket has uh, bushings built into the gasket. It's a steel gasket. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not super flexible, but it's not as absolutely rigid. And it has these bushings in here, so you can't over-tighten. Uh, I'll try and give you a look at that. You can't over-tighten the gasket because the bushing controls the crush depth. And the gasket is molded so that it seals once you've reached once you've bottomed out that entire gasket. So if I put this gasket on here and it fits right where I need it to fit, you don't, with this particular gasket you don't need any sealant because it's a silicone coated gasket that's going to seal no matter what. I've never had one of these leak when properly torqued. And then if I take my valve cover and sit it on here you can see how, and this is a, an aluminum valve cover with a machine flat bottom. So this is going to fit right on those and I can torque that down. Now before I do that if you're freshening up your engine, uh, if you have steel valve covers and you're going to paint them, sandblast and paint them, now is the time to do it. But if you see this valve cover here, you can see this is an aluminum valve cover, but it's pretty dirty. Uh, it, it's oxidized. You can see the, the fingerprints. There's oil on there, and you can see it's kind of dirty. So what I'm going to do is real quick, I'm going to show you how to freshen up an aluminum oil pan. Uh, I'm sorry, an aluminum valve cover, and uh, real quick how to polish this and how to make it look nice before you put it on. Let's do that. Now this is what I got for a buffer. I have a, an Eastwood third horsepower buffing wheel. On one side I have a sizzle wheel which is for very rough buffing and then on the other side I have a white white wool which is not white because I've used it to polish a lot of aluminum. And this is just a polished, polished aluminum surface. I'm going to be using the white rouge to polish my aluminum. 
and I'm quite simply just turn my wheel on, put a little bit of rouge to condition my wheel. And you want to grab your, your valve cover kind of firmly because this will grab it, rip it right out of your hands. And I'm just going to start moving back and forth just like this across the polishing wheel with a light amount of pressure. I'm not going to push it so hard that I bend it like that or, sh or, or uh, stall the motor out. I'm just going to start to polish like this. And it's a very painstaking process, so take your time, take your time, don't rush. But polish part of this. Put a little bit of little more rouge on there. Now, I only did that for what, a couple minutes? You can already see the difference. See this difference in shine here? Here you have an oxidized surface and here's a polished aluminum surface. See how nice and clean that is? So you can take a little time and you can polish up your, your uh, valve covers to make them very, very shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on polishing the rest of this valve cover and then we'll put it on. One last step before you put your valve covers on. Take a little motor oil and pour it inside your rockers. This is going to help with friction at startup and help distribute the oil a little evenly, a little faster. So put some on top of the rockers, fill up the rocker, and you can let it drip down. Whatever you don't want to do is don't let it drip and sit on the, the surface of your, of your cam cover right here, or your uh, rocker cover, because it will cause a leak pass. So just a little bit of oil on there, just to lube it up before you put your uh, valve cover on. So now we're ready to put the valve cover on, and we're sure that we have this pan rail is clean. I put a little bit of crap on there for my finger, dirty from the up. Uh, that's a good point right there. I'm glad I did that because when you're done, when you're done polishing aluminum, make sure your hands are clean because the oxidation and the aluminum that comes off on your hands like this, it'll it'll cause a mess. But when you have your valve cover polished or painted, depending on what you did, it comes out nice and clean. And it's nice and shiny, and you have a couple options at this point. It's all about options. You can leave it just raw aluminum, and if you do that, over time it's going to exhaust. You're going to have to take them off and polish them again. You can powder coat them. Now, I powder coated the blue inside there, and I could powder coat this clear to, to protect it so it doesn't oxidize. But if I do that, it's going to take the aluminum and it's going to, it's going to make it a little milky like that. And I don't want that milky color on my valve cover, so I'm going to leave it, I want to leave it polished. But what I did do, what I didn't show you is after you're finished polishing your valve cover and it's completely clean, you can take some high temperature engine paint, the clear, put a light coat over the whole thing, seal it, and leave it there. That makes it easier to clean, won't absorb oil and fingerprints, but over time, if you use a cheap paint, it can flake off and you might end up, have to end up doing it over again anyway. But I like that option because it leaves the shiny surface and it keeps it clean. So now we're going to put. The, well now I'm going to put this uh, valve cover on, and with any installation of any other part, being careful not to drop anything. So I want to just want to get this in place first. And the nice thing about these gaskets are, you can sit it there. I can sit my valve cover in place, get it lined up, and it will sort of just sit there until I'm ready to put it in. Now I can take my first bolt. Get my bolt in there. I gotta hurry up because here comes Mr. Softy. I can hear him coming down the street. Nice day for an ice cream. First bolt. And I'm just gonna get this one in place. So I will go around, put the rest of the bolts in, make sure they're all lined up, everything's nice and clean, and then I will torque it down. So guys, there you have it throttle body, carburetor installation, and valve covers. 
Once you have these all done, you can be fairly confident you're not going to drop a fastener, washer, anything inside. It's going to fall inside the valley of your engine. It's not going to fall inside the manifold. The top end is fairly well sealed up, and you don't have to worry about that because if you have to fish it out, believe me, it can be uh, it can be very trying and very frustrating if you're trying to get a washer out from underneath your valley pan. It can take an hour, two, three hours if you don't want to pull it all apart. When you're putting these things together, remember cleanliness. I say that in every video. Make sure it's clean. Make sure there's no grease. All your surfaces are clean. Everything fit, fits flat. You're not forcing anything. You torque everything down. Always follow the manufacturer's recommended torque pattern and torque specification. I know I didn't do it on these uh, throttle bodies, but I've been doing that a long time and I know how to feel it. Like I said, I'm just sealing air. I'm not sealing air and gas up here. And I'm going to test this for leaks. We'll do that later. Same thing with your valve covers. Don't over tighten them. The gaskets will squish out. You'll cause a leak and it'll be a big mess. Take your time. Be clean. Be neat. Follow a process and I'm sure you'll be successful. I really appreciate everybody's comments. I appreciate your emails, your texts. It's great. You guys have sent me some great stuff. Now I never claim to be an expert on everything. I don't think anybody really can, but I'll tell you what. I offer and I share what I do know and you guys have some fantastic ideas and great tips to share with everybody. So if you do have something to share, please share it. And don't be nasty. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Everybody has a bad day. You might make a comment that's a little bit nasty or a little bit, well, oh, let's say, critical of someone else. And I give you a chance to redeem yourself. But if you come back and continue to be nasty, I'm just going to delete the comments because it doesn't help you. It doesn't help the people who are trying to learn. And it doesn't help me because I'm trying to help people. If you want to help me, you want to help me help people, let's all be nice and get along. We're all trying to enjoy this hobby. We're all trying to learn how to do this, how to do it right. And there's always a thousand ways to do one thing. I'm just showing you and sharing the best ways that I have learned how to do these things. So, you have something different to share? Please share it with us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the texts. I love seeing your projects. All the cars you guys are working on, the things that you've used that I've shown here and how you've used them. Excellent. I love it. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by Pete's Garage.